Okay, let's get started. Now, if you haven't already, please go back and look at the notes section of this video because I have links there that tell you how to install Git for the various operating systems out there. There's three major ones, of course. There's Apple OS X, which is what I'm using here. There's Microsoft Windows, and there's Linux. And based on your operating system preference, uh, uh, you have to do something a little different. The video today is using Git based on the command line, and I think this is the most appropriate way to proceed. Although the GUIs are very nice, uh, there's no reason to avoid a GUI. But if you're a developer, um, excuse me, if, you, if you're using Git, it's somewhat presumed that you have some skill at the command line because you're going to be writing code. Uh, you don't have to be an expert at the command line. I use the command line here because it's the most universal approach. And the commands that you see me using in this video can also be used on any operating system. One of the first things that you should do when using Git is to tell it a little bit about yourself. We'll give it some information about uh, what our username is as well as our email. Now at first this doesn't seem to be necessary because you're just becoming familiar with the basics. But at some point when your repository becomes mature and you want to share it with other people, you will probably wind up pushing your repository to one of the popular hosting services such as GitHub or uh, Bitbucket, at which point you will need to establish this information. So better to go ahead and do it now than later. Now this uh, is arbitrary and you can certainly change it. You don't have to live with it, uh, but better to learn how to do it now. This also gives you the basic format for Git commands. The first word in any Git command is G-I-T followed by a subcommand and any arguments that pertain to that subcommand. Now some of these git uh, commands can get long. Uh, usually they're not too long, but it's a little bit confusing and it takes some getting used to. So let's check our work. We can fetch the information that we just supplied. And we see that our username and email have been established. Another popular initial activity when learning Git is to learn how to download a remote repository. Many newcomers first learn about Git from reading a research paper or an open source software project that makes reference to a Git repository. Now they don't necessarily know what Git is or what the tool is for, they just know that they need to use the tool to download a repository. Also if you've taken one of the recent MOOCs such as those offered by edX or Coursera, it's an increasingly popular practice for instructors there to make their material available via a Git repository that's hosted on one of the popular hosting services such as GitHub or Bitbucket. Let me show you what one of those might look like. Here's a web page that I've created under my GitHub ID. You see this is hosted on github.com. I have a repository called Cool Underbar Software and this is simply an example of what's possible. There's really not a lot of interesting code here. Now, if I wanted to clone this or fetch this, all I have to do is highlight this URL and I can use it in conjunction with a git, a git command, right? Git clone and I specify the URL. And as long as I'm connected to the network, things work out well. You can see that it cloned it into a folder called cool underbar software and it gave me some additional information about what it did. So what exactly have we done here? We have downloaded or cloned a repository called Cool Underbar Software from a hosting service called GitHub. Now this is simply a folder and you can use your operating system tools to inspect this folder. If you're using the Git shell um, that comes with your git package, it's easy to go in and check it out. So we'll use the ls command to verify that we have the same three files that we observed when we saw uh, the repository on the website, cool under bar software. So there's the three files and here are the three files here. Now at this point you may be wondering what's the big deal. We simply just downloaded some code 
And uh, what makes this a Git repository? Well, if we look a little bit closer, if we use ls-a, we'll see that there are some dot files. Uh, dot files are known as housekeeping files. And dot git is a directory itself. Now, I need to point out here that you do not want to get into the habit, or in general, you don't want to change dot git ever. Um, some people go in and change files, but they're usually quite knowledgeable and uh, it's not something you should attempt when you're first using it. But if we look in that directory, we see that there are a variety of subdirectories. This is how Git keeps track of all the changes you might make. We'll get into this a little bit later. But if we look at the config file, we see that there's a couple of sections here. Most of this doesn't make sense to you, and, and don't worry about it at this point. What I want to point out to you is that Git has an idea of where this folder came from. And if we look here under remote origin, we see that uh, our URL is there. This is the source of the folder. Why is this advantageous? So if we move back into our folder, the idea here is that if I, as the author, make changes to my repository on my website, then I can alert users to those changes and they can pull down any updates. So they don't have to keep re-downloading the same package over and over every time. All they have to do is pull in any changes. Now at this point, there really aren't any changes to pull down, and we get back this message already up to date. But um, let me show you what would happen. I'm going to create a new file here. And we'll simply say script2. Right. and I'll just put some code in here doesn't really make sense um, just some basic stuff so if I commit this new file you see that script 2 appears on the website now I don't have it yet here I'm in my folder back on my computer but if I say git pull look what happens we have the script 2 file so this is one reason or one distinct advantage of using Git to manage repositories.